Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today, I'm very excited to check it out Munchkin Shakespeare Deluxe from Steve Jackson Games. This is for three to six players, take about one to two hours to play, and it's for ages 10 plus. And in Munchkin Shakespeare Deluxe, this is another standalone slash expansion to the immensely popular game of Munchkin, which is one I've always been a fan of. It's one of the games that got me into the hobby, one of the first games I ever played when I got into the hobby. But this one is dealing with Shakespeare and Caesar and all sorts of stuff like that uh, based on the immensely popular author William Shakespeare in case I needed to clarify that uh, it's got the same sense of humor that you know and love for Munchkin but here's the thing I'm coming at this from a different perspective I enjoy Munchkin and I don't know too much about Shakespeare. Did I still enjoy the game? Did the humor come through? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of Munchkin Shakespeare Deluxe. So first and foremost, we're in our handy dandy rule booklet. Uh, it's pretty much three pages, double-sided. It's got a couple pictures, some illustrations. A very well done rule booklet. Obviously, this is like the 50th to 100th version of the game, so they have the rules down pat. So the rules should have you up and running pretty smoothly, and honestly, I can give you a good feel for how the game plays because the core rules of the game are very simple. So in Munchkin Deluxe, you're going to start as a lowly level 1 squire, and you're going to try and work your way up to level 10 by playing cards and defeating monsters. If you can get to level 10 by defeating a monster on your turn, then you will win the game. Uh, but it's not going to be that easy because obviously you're going to have to face monsters, you're going to be losing levels, and other people are going to be attacking you with various different cards. What am I talking about? Let's go over the components. Let's get into the gameplay. So first, we got the nice little board. It's just here to keep track of what level you were on. And that's important because that is actually part of your strength. So if you're a level one, you have one strength. If you have a piece of equipment that gives you uh, two strength, then you now have a strength of three because you're a level one. Pretty simple stuff there. Next, you're going to have two kinds of cards. You're going to have treasure cards for when you defeat monsters, and then you're going to have door cards, which you're going to be flipping over every single turn, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Nice, you're going to have this uh, little cool custom D6 dice. You're going to be using this primarily for card effects and also for when you have to run away from monsters, because sometimes you're going to have to run away from monsters if you cannot defeat them, and hopefully you'll be able to avoid the bad stuff on that card. Next, we have the cards and let's just go ahead and start it up and i'll show you how the game works when you first start the game you're going to start with four door cards you're going to start with four treasure cards you're going to take a look at these and you're going to put any of these on yourself that you can because you are going to be strapping yourself up building yourself up getting ready for the fight and this is actually a terrible example because i don't have any cards i have three cards that let me go up a level which is great but i don't have any cards which are going to uh let me equip stuff so i'm going to go ahead and Grab a couple more here, and we'll cheat a little bit for this particular example. So we got this. We'll just grab these these cards. So let's just pretend these are the cards I start with. I can uh, hook myself up with a plus two bonus by having a shake spear, maybe held in both hands and used as a plus five weapon. So yeah, we'll definitely do that. So now I have a strength of six because I'm a plus five weapon, and I have a base strength of one. Now, since I'm using this as a two-handed weapon... Uh, the one hand big, uh, it's going to take up both hands. So I can only have one weapon out there right now. Let's see. Foot gear. This is plus two bonus, plus four for females. Let's just pretend that I'm red, so I would be a lady, because it's in, in this game you can choose whether or not you're going to be a lady or a dude. One thing that Munchkin has always done, as far as I can tell. Uh, so we'll just pretend I'm a lady. So this is going to give me plus four. So right now I would have a strength of ten, plus five, plus four, plus one. So that's a great way to start the game off. Let's see. If you are the target of a curse, roll the die on a six. You rise above it and ignore the effect. That's actually really cool too because curses really do stink, hence by the name curses. Let's see. We'll put one more on here. So plus two, plus four. This is rich armor that scalds with safety. Plus two if the sun is out. Go look if you have to. Plus four otherwise. Right now I'm shooting this in the morning, the sun is not out, so this would be plus two. Well, this would be a great way to start the game. If this were my hypothetical hand, uh, I, I would immediately have a big target on my back because I right now have 12 strength. So let's show you what you're going to do on your turn. So on your turn, the first thing you're going to do is going to kick open the door. So we flip over this top card, we flip it over immediately, and it is merely a player. Minus five to monster. So this is a card that you'll put in your hand and it will allow you to modify future monsters 
uh, that are going to be coming out because obviously sometimes you're going to want to use this for yourself. Sometimes you will team up with people, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Play during any combat. If the monster is defeated, draw one fewer treasure, minimum of one. So this one is going to help you out a lot, but it's going to leg it so you draw less treasure. So we draw that, we put it into our hand. If that were a curse, we would have to deal with the curse, uh, but luckily it's not. A curse looks like this. So this one, curse the winter of discourse, you lose a level, which would be a bummer, uh, but luckily we're at level one, so it doesn't really matter. So if there was a monster, I would fight that said monster. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a monster. Where's a monster at? There we go. So this one right here, the level one pound of flesh it's undead which doesn't apply because we don't have anything that has the undead keyword and there will be keywords throughout the game we'll need to be like oh undead i think i have a spear to especially deal with undead uh this one is plus four against thieves and the bad stuff is you lose heart or yeah you lose heart automatically fail your next runaway roll so if you were to not be able to defeat this guy and you can't run away from it. You'd have to roll the dice to see if you could run away from it. The bad stuff would happen to you. But we're probably going to be able to defeat it. Because our strength, as we mentioned, is 12 right now. And this is only a level 1. So right now it's level 12 versus level 1. So here's how this works. We reveal the card and we say, does anyone want to modify this card? Because somebody might be like, ha, take that. So now you only have 7th strength. And then somebody else might be like, let's see if I can find I think there's one on the top. Oh, of course I can't find it now. They might be like, uh, ha! Uh, well, give me a second. You kidding me? You kidding me right now? I just saw like six of them. They would play another bonus modifier that would kind of screw you over. So they might add like five to the monster or ten to the monster. Or do something like that that is going to mess you up. So let's just say that uh, somebody played this minus five. Oh, that's minus five to monster. Actually, that would help. So let's say somebody played a plus 10 to this monster, then another plus 5. So the monster was a 16. So now I would have a problem, because I would now be losing with my strength of 12. So at that point, I might say, all right, I, I need some help from somebody. Can somebody help me out now? Uh, which at this point, someone could say, all right, I will help you out, but I want the one treasure, because it says down here on the bottom right, the one treasure you're going to get for this. So essentially, you will earn the level. Because every time you defeat a monster, you'll earn the level if it's your turn. But I get the treasure. And that might be the negotiating thing. So maybe this guy over here has, say, seven strength. And he's like, yeah, I'll throw my seven strength to you, but I want that one treasure card. And this is where the free form, it's very negotiating. So let's just say there was three treasures. Somebody like, all right, uh, I get to look at the treasure and pick two of them. And you get the, the third one or something like that. And this is where you can kind of negotiate back and forth, which is something I really enjoy about this game. So they'd say, all right, I have my seven strength, so now we have a strength of 19. This has a strength of, I don't remember what we said, 16. And so at this point, it'd be, it'd be like, does anyone want to play any cards? And at this point, if no one played cards, then you would win, and you would move on about your merry way. But if someone continued to play cards on it, then both people would be on the hook for the bad stuff. So let's just say somebody else played a plus five to this. Well, then they... If, if the uh, the two other players can't do anything, they're both going to have to try to run away from this monster. So when you team up with someone, you have to deal with the bad stuff as well if it does not work out. And that's pretty much what you're going to do. At the end of your turn, you're going to discard down to five cards. And this game is a really interesting discard system where you don't just get rid of cards. You actually have to give them to the player uh, with the lowest level, I believe it is. Uh, it's called charity, and you have to give them. So it kind of is like this automatic catch-up mechanism in the game. Now let's pretend, though, that you did not get a monster. Well, if you kick open the door, and you didn't, so this time we actually got one of the races in the game we'll talk about races and classes in a second you get to put this into your hand and then you have two choices you can either loot the room which means you take a secret card and put it into your hand and that's the end of your turn or you can go fight a monster in which case you can play a monster card from your hand and i don't actually have oh i do i have this level 14 undead spirits from the vastly deep you can play a monster from your hand and fight that said monster. So having low-level monsters in your hand is actually a good thing as well. But anywho, that's what you're going to do on your turn. You're going to kick open the door. If it's a monster, you're going to fight that monster, perhaps with teamwork from the uh, at least one other player. You can only do it with one other player at the table. Uh, collecting your treasure or dealing with bad stuff, running away. 
And then you're going to continue to do that until someone gets to level 10. But along the way, you're going to get all sorts of gear and all sorts of loot because you are going through a, a dungeon. You will be able to change your race and your class. And there's going to be different classes in the game. you got clerics and thieves and warriors and wizards. Uh, the really interesting one is one of the races, which is the, the oh, where is it? It's the bard, I think it was. Uh, the bard had a really cool special ability, which I have not seen in any of the other games. Uh, yeah, so here's the Bard. This is one of the classes. And each of the classes has its own unique quirks, which uh, kind of makes each of them feel different. And you can have a race and a class. So in combat on your turn, you may discard a card and select a rival. Each of you rolls a die. If your roll beats his, he must help you and cannot ask for a reward. So very, very interesting there. If you fail, you may dis you may discard again and try to enthrall another rival, continuing until you succeed. So you're giving up cards, but at the same time, you're essentially forcing people to help you. Very interesting card. Um, and each one of the classes and race has its own little quirks, which I like an awful lot. But anywho, you're going to continue to go until somebody gets to level 10, at which point they will be the winner of Sh Munchkin Shakespeare. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Munchkin Shakespeare Deluxe from Steve Jackson Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First and foremost, all the cons that you're used to in Munchkin. Three to six players, but let's be honest, it's best at the higher player counts, but at the same time, it's worse at the higher player counts because the game can stretch on way, 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 way too long. It says one to two hours, but when you're playing six players, it's going to be closer to three, especially if there's that one person at the table aka me who will not go quietly into that cold night and just refuses to let one person win and they just slowly try to scratch and claw their way to getting that level 10 and that will drag out the game and you know that's been a problem with munchkin since the first time i played it and that's a problem with munchkin that's probably never going to go away uh, also, the biggest con that I have with this theme version of the game is that if you are not the biggest fan of Shakespeare, which I am not, I mean, I've, I've watched the plays and I've watched some of the movies and I enjoy what I've seen, but I haven't, I, I didn't get a lot of the inside jokes and I didn't, and, and I'll be brutally honest. I was, I was a plebeian. I was a normie, whatever you want to call me on that. A lot of the jokes went over my head and a lot of the sense of humor in the game was not aimed at me. And that's the biggest takeaway from this game is that you're not the biggest fan of Shakespeare, this is not the version of Munchkin for you. It's just that simple. And it's not a bad thing necessarily because there's 50 different versions of Munchkin, but it's something that you need to know. So, continuing on with the cons, you know, uh, the game stays too long. It has a lot of backstabbing. This is an attacky game. People are going to be playing cards on you. And if you're not a take that card game fan, this one will definitely not be for you. But, I mean, you kind of know that going into it with most versions of munchkin uh the other last kind i have with this game is that a lot of the classes and the roles were recycled from older versions of munchkin i always like when there's new stuff to check out new classes new races and as far as i know and i could absolutely be 100 percent wrong the bard is the only one that seemed like it was newish to me and i really did i thought the bard was a cool one but moving on to the pros i mean this is more munchkin and it's just this simple most of these reviews are just as simple do you like munchkin Check. Do you like Shakespeare? Check. I think you're going to enjoy the humor of the game. Because I did end up playing this with a couple of people who uh, were theater buffs. And they, they understood a lot more of these jokes than I did. And they got a kick out of it. Just the same way that I do with zombies or with the Harry Potter version of the game. Or it wasn't Harry Potter. It was because they didn't have the license for Harry Potter. And that's pretty much what it boils down to. And that's one of the beautiful things about Munchkin. That there is a theme for everyone and this theme was not for me it's still a fun game of munchkin i still had a few chuckles here and there when i understood the jokes and i always felt special it was like oh, 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 i understand this joke oh there's a toga if you're backstabbed by a thief this armor does not count for you i understood that reference ah! you know and there was just too few of those in this game for me but that's me personally that's a your mileage may vary kind of thing so in the end if you like shakespeare if you're a theater buff then this is probably going to be the munchkin for you there's a lot of cards and there's a lot of funny cards so i was told but for me personally this is not the version of munchkin for me and i'm actually going to be giving this to one of the people i played with who really does enjoy theater so in the end munchkin shakespeare deluxe if you like munchkin and if you like theater yes you can definitely take this mix it with any version of munchkin have a good old time with it but for me personally 
it was not for me. But then again, I'm not the biggest theater buff. So that is Munchkin Shakespeare Deluxe. It's a fun game, but it wasn't the much shake munchkin for me because one of the one of the things that has always made munchkin good to great for me was the sense of humor and the sense of humor did not hit with this version of munchkin for me so there you go munchkin shakespeare deluxe it looks like it might be a cup of tea be sure to check that one out if you enjoyed this review please try to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know what's your favorite play that you've ever seen if you've seen a play uh i don't know if plays and musicals are actually considered different entities or not but i went and saw uh i think it was the lion king uh musical in denver colorado that was really stinking cool but i don't think musicals count as plays i'm not sure I'm sure let me know in the comments below so i'm actually gonna go with also in denver colorado oddly enough there was this place that i used to go to i went there twice that did plays in their basement and it was just a straight up basement that had been converted into like this mini theater and they did a production of Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory down in their basement. There was like 60 people in the audience. It was one of those ones where you had to book it like months in advance. It was super stinking cool and uh, that, that would probably be my favorite one. But let me know in the comments below. What's your favorite play that you've ever seen? And also, is a play a musical? Is a musical a play? Let me know because I'm a plebeian who doesn't know this sort of things. And as always, thanks for your time YouTube.